After the last two videos, which were our kind of a reintroduction to linear algebra, in case you forgot, we're now actually going to do the thing we said we we're going to do, which is turn graphs into vector spaces. We're going to take a particular graph, and from it, we're going to actually extract several different interesting vector spaces that you can define just in terms of the graph. And this will open up the possibilities of applying all kinds of ideas from linear algebra to our graph problems. So this is our big idea from graph to vect. Right, so vect is shorthand for all vector spaces and linear maps. All right, so we know how to do the following. We know how to take a set and turn it into a vector space. So I briefly mentioned this before. If you have, let's say, a finite set, it doesn't actually have to be a finite set, but um, it avoids some logical difficulties. And we take the power set and we allow the addition operation on sets to be the symmetric difference. This, I use this circle plus here. There's other symbols used for symmetric difference. I like this one because it's also used for XOR. And you should think about symmetric difference as a kind of XOR of sets. All right, so once you do that, you do get a vector space. And in fact, if you want to see what a basis for that space would be, you would just take the, say, the singletons. Right? That's a set of size one. So if I just take a set of size one for each element of the set, that will form a basis. And so immediate from that is that the dimension of the space I get is actually just the size or the cardinality of S. All right, so that's fine. That tells me how to get from sets to vector spaces. But I want to get from graphs to vector spaces. And so the simplest thing I can do is use the fact that I already know how to go from graphs to sets. In fact, I know two different ways of doing it. One is by just reducing to the vertex set. And the other is to just take the edge set. Okay, so both of these are different ways of getting a set. And so if I take that vertex set and turn it into a vector space, I get the vertex space. And I'm going to use a, a notation that's very similar to the notation we've been using for the vertex set, except it's curlier. So the curly V here, sub G, is the vertex space. I don't know what I just wrote. Vertex space. And uh, similarly, the curly E sub G is going to be the edge space of the graph G. All right, so two different ways to get from a graph to a set, and then we turn that set into a vector space, and therefore we get two vector spaces defined in terms of our graph G immediately. All right, so let's dive into one of these in a little bit more detail just to get, get a better feel for it. If G is our graph, this edge space, as we said, was the power set of the edges, with the operation of symmetric difference. So that is the elements here, or the vectors, are subsets of edges. And again, this is symmetric difference of those sets. Symmetric, I think there's two M's in symmetric difference. All right. So in other words, if I take a particular graph, let's take a graph like this. I can take a subset of edges. Let's say I take these two, this one and this one. And I take another set of edges. Let me do it in a different style here. Like uh, maybe I'll circle them like this set over here. Then addition in this vector space, addition of these two vectors would give me just two edges, right? So I'd get the edges that are in exactly one of these two sets, and I would lose the overlap. So where they intersect, that would cancel out in the usual way that the symmetric difference works. All right, so let's just also see a little bit more detail about why this really is a vector space. And in particular, we'll see that it's a vector space over GF2. Remember that this is the field with two elements, so you think of them as 0, 1, and the one main difference you run into is that 1 plus 1 is not 2, it's 0. 
And this is again why we have this cancellation where something appears two times, it goes away again, and that's one copy plus one copy is zero. A corollary of this is that one is equal to negative one, and in particular, a plus b is equal to a minus b. There's no difference between addition and subtraction in this field, which is a little uh, disconcerting the first time you see it. All right, so just remember that's our field. So if we are thinking about scalar multiplication, we're really just saying whether the element is there or not. Uh, and so multiplication by zero just gives us the empty set. In this graph, I've numbered the edges from zero to four. And so I can think of this subset of edges here as a vector. And what I'll do is I'll write a zero if it's absent and a one if it's present. So the first edge, E0, is present. E1 is absent. E2 is absent. E3 is present. And E4 is absent. This is also called the characteristic vector of a set. So once you order the elements in a set, you can write these characteristic vectors. And now we're going to do addition here in this space where now the addition looks like normal addition for vectors, but again subject to this condition that 1 plus 1 is going to equal 0. So the set E2, E3 will look like this, uh, edge 0, edge 1, edge 2, edge 3, edge 4. And we can first do the addition and see that we get what we hope, which is the symmetric difference. So 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0. So I should get this, which is what I got. Edge 0 and edge 2 are present. So this symmetric difference, uh, which in some sense it just canceled out the common part, so it took the union minus the intersection, gives us this set, and this is just rewritten in this vector form this way. So you can do this. You can think about the operations in this vector space either purely combinatorially as symmetric difference on sets or in this really a kind of matrix form that you, that you see here. So uh, the dimension, as I said, of this set EG, or sorry, this vector space EG is just equal to the cardinality of the edge set. And that's, again, pretty clear because we wrote a basis for this space where each edge was a basis element. All right, and that would just be the standard basis. All right, so that's the edge space as a vector space over GF2. Now, keep that in mind, and we're going to talk about something which at first looks a little different. It's called the cuts in a graph, and actually, to be more specific, edge cuts in a graph. So let's take a subset of vertices, we'll call it U. It's a subset of the vertices. So here's a graph, and I've got U here, and this is U complement, right? It's all the edges, I'm sorry, all the vertices in the graph that are not in U. And the cut for U is going to be all the edges that go from within U to outside of U. So they have one end in U. Formally, we could write this as the edges intersected with u cross u complement, or if you like, uh, you can think of this as the set of all edges in EG such that the size of E intersect u is 1. Right? There's exactly one end of each edge in u. All right. So this is a way to get a set of edges from a set of vertices. And so as a function, you could think of it as a function from the power set of the vertices, that is from a set of vertices to a set of edges. And cuts show up a lot, especially in computer science. There are many algorithmic problems which are all based on finding cuts. And if you are looking for a particularly good cut such a, in problems such as the sparsest cut or max cut or approximations to these, it's 
nice to think about them just in terms of the subset of edges. I'm sorry, the subset of vertices that you're separating. Um, but also if you want to take multiple cuts and combine them, you could try to combine them using uh, the symmetric difference. And in fact, that will also give you a new cut. And moreover, this mapping as a function is linear. So we're going to prove this, but the key idea is that the cut of say a plus b is going to be equal to the cut of a plus the cut of b. So in fact, we actually have a linear map, so you can think of this as follows, that this is actually a linear map between our two vector spaces. So we have the vertex space of G and the edge space of G, and this cut function actually takes us from one to the other, and it's a nice linear transformation between these two vector spaces. All right, to prove that, uh, um, well, I'm just gonna tell you what the matrix is that realizes the linear transformation. I have two finite dimensional vector spaces, right? This is an n-dimensional space, this is an m-dimensional space. I have a function between them, and if it is a linear map, then it should be realized by some n by m uh, matrix. Sorry, it should be an m by n matrix. So here's what we do. We first, let's give some numbers to the vertices. So the vertices, let's call them v0 to vn minus 1, and the edges, we'll call them e0 to em minus 1. And we're going to just identify vi with the standard basis ve vector bi, and the same ei will also be associated with bi. So we're going to write this cut function as a matrix, and here's, for a particular graph, I'll just show you what it looks like. This matrix B, and B here is, I think it's probably for boundary, it's often called B, is 0, 1, 1, 0, right? So edge 0, which defines this column, is the edge from vertex 1 to vertex 2. Here it is. Next, edge 1 goes from edge uh, vertex 0 to vertex 1, and edge 2 goes from 1 to 3. Okay, so this is um, a matrix which really captures the incidence relationship between the vertices, which represent the rows, and the edges, which are represented by the columns. And more generally, we're going to define this matrix B to have an entry ij equal to 1 if the ith vertex is in the jth edge and zero otherwise. And now this cut function, it turns out is exactly just B transpose U. Now I've done it in the transpose for some historical reasons, which hopefully will make more sense later because um, we will look at B itself as a linear transformation, but B transpose now is gonna take us from sets of vertices to sets of edges. And so if I were to apply this matrix, if you look at what's happening, B transpose is going to have columns corresponding to these rows, and these rows are one for each vertex, and they have one entry for every edge incident to that vertex. And so if you add up all of these columns corresponding to a subset of vertices, you're going to add up all the edges incident to a vertex in U. And if an edge has two vertices in U, then uh, it will cancel out because it will be counted twice. All right, so what does it really mean for this cut to be linear. So this is the definition of, well, let's, let's say it's one half of the definition of what it means to be linear. Scalar multiplication mod two is actually pretty easy for us to check. Um, you can do that on your own. But for a function to be linear, one thing it, that must be true is that it must 
uh, distribute over the addition in this way. And so here I've got a graph and I've got two different sets of vertices, A and B. And if I wanted to look at the cut of their sum, and maybe I'll just try to use this highlighter to indicate where what the sum. Remember, that's like th this set in here and this part over here, right? This set of vertices that are in exactly one of these two sets. It's going to be the case then that the cut for, across the sum is exactly just the sum of the two cuts. So there are some edges here which cut across the sum of the two vertex sets. And you can see that those are included among, some of them are from the cuts of A, some are from the cuts of B, but anything that was in both, uh, for instance, uh, this edge or this edge, um, oh wait, I guess neither of those, let's see, are there any that are cutting across both? I should have drawn at least one more edge in here that cuts across both. Any edge that was in both would also have canceled out. Okay, so what do we have? This uh, matrix B, as I mentioned, it's called this the incidence matrix, and B transpose can be thought of, now this is a linear transformation from vertex, set, vertex space to edge space, and B goes the other way. It turns out that because we showed that this cut operation is linear, we get something called the cut space, which is just the image of B transpose. Right, so any cut that we could have gotten uh, is going to be in here. And uh, this is a linear subspace of the edge space. Right, this is a standard way to define a subspace is to just take a linear map and look at its image. And you might ask the following question. What is the dimension of this cut space? And it's not all uh, of EG, so it's not, it doesn't have dimension M. You might think it has dimension N because, well, it's coming from the vertex set and you could perhaps try to think about each vertex as a single cut and define a basis by the image there, but that doesn't quite work either. Uh, we'll dig into this a little bit later. Um, but that gives us our first and second and third vector spaces that we might associate with a graph. The vertex space, the edge space, and now the cut space.